Welcome, folks, to Arms Trade Tycoon Tanks. That is a mouth, mouthful of a name. Uh, but that is what we're jumping into today, and I am really looking forward to it. Uh, the game is being uh, developed, uh, de developed by Fungi, and the publisher is Microprose Software. If you have been a gamer for as long as I have, then you know that Microprose have been behind some pretty big titles, uh, such as Civilization, uh, UFO or XCOM as it's known today, uh, Sid Meier's Pirates, which I would love to see a new version of. Uh, yeah, so many games, so many games, it's insane. Railroad Tycoon, they have been behind a lot of wonderful games and started many great series like Civilization and uh, and XCOM. Uh, Silent Hunter, uh, U-Boat game, just uh, amazing, amazing. And now they are doing Arms Trade Tycoon Tanks. And we are going to jump into this. This is a demo. You can get it yourself on Steam. I'll put a link in the description so you can go check it out or uh, you can get you can get it on steam uh, the demo and, and we're gonna jump in uh, and, and take a look at it uh, so not available in demo we'll go as great britain i guess and look at those snazzy old tanks uh we're not going to read all this if you do want to read all of it then um Go ahead and pause the game and, and read it. Uh, I'm not going to read it all out to you. Uh, but basically, we are starting uh, before World War One, and we are going to make tanks. Uh, and it is a tank building tycoon tycoon game, as the title was would suggest. So uh, yeah, welcome to the demo. Uh, it's a very early version, blah, 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 blah. It's all subject to change. It is on Kickstarter at the moment. And uh, uh, to be honest, I have uh, backed the game on Kickstarter. So I am looking forward to having a little bit early access when uh, the full version is released. Right now, it's slated to be released in Q2 2023. So there's a while to go, but I guess there's a lot to do. Uh, but, to be honest, the game seems really cool in its current state, so adding on to it, well, it can only get better, right? So, uh, let's see, who, who do we want to be? Uh, well, um, let's see, I'll, I'll be uh, the cigar smoking guy, and our company logo will be... Mm, the lion thing here. Let's do that. Oh, player name. Uh, my player name is going to be uh, Nerdy Gamer. It's fine. And the company name is going to be uh, Tanks R. Lots. Okay. Greetings. My name is William Hay. H. Haggis? William Haggis? H how do you pronounce that name? I have no idea. And I am the chairman of the executive board recently assigned to this role by your father. After your father's sudden disappearance, you as a rightful heir will gain control of all his assets and I would do my best to assist you in that. I suppose I should really know how to pron pronounce his name. I guess I should know him. Uh, let me start by expressing my joy to be the first one to show you your new property. All buildings on the factory grounds have recently been finished and your company is now fully operational. Great. As you can see, all activities are divided between six buildings. Each building has one or several unique functions that you have to master in order to succeed. Okay. The research department is the heart of your company. It is here that all the all new ideas are, new ideas are born. 
Uh, within these walls, blueprints are created for improved components and production processes. The engineering workshop within this facility, the research blueprints are analyzed, combined, and take shape. This process is called engineering. Well, it's the name of the building. Uh, there is also room set aside in this building for reverse engineering to take place in the future. Cool, cool. The design bureau is the birthplace of your tanks. Here, under your leadership, your engineers will create tanks based on your designs and uh, and available engineered components. Whilst I'm sure you will make every effort to create a tank that matches your customers' requirements, the real test uh, will, will come when they enter trials and inevitably on the fields of battle. The production hall has recently been completed... Uh, well, let's start over on that one. The, the production hall has recently completed renovation and maintenance. The equipment contained within the structure now stands ready to produce your tanks in large numbers. Just ensure that there is enough space in the nearby warehouse to store them. Speaking of which, the warehouse combines two functions. Here you can manage the logistics for your freshly produced tanks and negotiate resource deals with various suppliers. Finally, administration accum accumulates all the seemingly bureaucratic function that can spell the difference between a successful tycoon and a small-scale component supplier. Human resources, finances, and external communications are all handled from this office. As you visit each of these facilities, you will notice reserved, locked, and empty spaces. These are of your, these areas of your operations are not immediately available to you, but your actions will unlock access to them in the near future. Okay, let's head into research. Uh, the research department is the origin of all the new ideas. Here the best minds under your guidance will develop the new technologies that will allow you to compete with other companies, both domestically and internationally. As you can see, there are multiple places that will require your attention, but for the time being, let us focus on the major ones. Okay, he's just going on now. Now let us head over to the research line one where your, our engineers are eagerly awaiting your instructions. Okay, uh, no, no, I don't want to risk it in the tutorial. Uh, before your father vanished, he had already made some progress on the development of the tank. Each tank, as perceived by your father, will have a well-armored structure, high, mobi high mobility, and substantial firepower. The hull, as the main body of the tank... Okay, a little typo there. Uh, and turrets, which are separate armored sections which are attached to the hull. Your father believed that the mobility of the tank could be attained with the inclusion of two major parts. Okay, next. All right, I guess we have to click there. The power unit, which is a means of powering this multi-ton monster, and a running gear, a novel combination of the continuous track and other support elements that will allow the tank to easily trespass any cross-country terrain. Last but not least is firepower. Your father felt there would be a need for two types of interchangeable weapon parts. A primary weapon, a main caliber gun that will allow you to fight other armored units or fortifications, and secondary weapon, a support weapon that can vary from a machine gun to a mortar with the sole purpose to deal with the soft and light armored targets. Naturally, each component has a dedicated research path. Each advancement along that path will grant you either blueprints from tank parts or instructions for improvements in the production process. We have staff standing by for instructions on the next research assignment. I suggest we turn our attention to the whole component and make some improvements there. Okay. Uh, the riveted rhomboidal hull is the final important component we need to assert before moving on to engineering. Let's review the potential gain for this research project. Okay. As you can see, this technology grants you several blueprints that can be molded into new parts. You will notice that certain blueprints are marked as component, which means they are key building blocks for the future of a tank. Okay. So we get the uh, Mark 1, the tail wheel, uh, dine court ball mount, escape hatch, and crew in face masks. Okay, don't know why they have to look like a serial killer, but fine. 
Other blueprints are marked as modifier, and this implies they can be used to modify tank components. Um, which one is marked as modifier? I don't see which one is marked as modifier and which is marked as essential or whatever. Uh, our engineer has just handed me the draft version of the blueprints for the anticipated Mark 1 hull. Let us study it in more detail. Sure. Uh, as you can see from the draft, there is a formal description of the component and our engineers have included a, pl a plentitude of information that will form your choice when it comes to developing this whole component. Okay. So, shaped as rhomboid with fracturing around the outside for maximum maneuverability, the hull is made from a framework, blah, 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 uh, access top, blah, 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 blah. blah. Okay, mass 12,635 kilos. Wow, that is a heavy boy. Okay, this summary includes the expected attributes for the given hull. So, heavy, not very agile. Uh, obstacle trench width, I don't know if that's good or bad. Obstacle step height, I don't know if that is good or bad. All right. The resource panel explains the cost of research in man hours and resources. So we'll be using iron, medium carbon steel, high carbon steel, and a lot of man hours. Okay. Uh, the panel lets you know the anticipated com compatibility with other tank parts. Note to judge if something is compatible, the engineers are using a type system. This means that this hull can be combined with many other tank parts if the types are a match. So it can be combined with a running gear, a power unit, and a secondary weapon. Okay. Also, please observe that the Mark 1 hull comes with, a, with several sockets where various modifiers can be mounted. I guess that's these things. Each socket is marked with the type. Storage, site, protection, fuel, auxiliary, access, cooling, MG mount, protection, site. Okay. And location. The modifiers require, require to satisfy both conditions to be mounted. Okay, so internal, top, rear, front. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. Let us now inspect the tailwheel modifier. Okay. Like the component blueprint, you can find the attributes. Okay, they're there, uh, and production costs that will be added to the component where this modifier is mounted. So it'll take some iron, some high carbon steel, some man hours, and it'll cost a bit of money. Note that if you want to mount this modifier in the socket of the component, both type and position specified by the socket must match with those of the modifier. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's go to the turrets and take a look at that. Unlike standard technologies that are providing us with the blueprints, this one will allow us to apply the tempered steel process during the turret assembly. Let us inspect the notes that our engineers have done. It appears that the anticipated process will have an impact on the listed tank attributes. Note that there is also an associated co additional cost that we should account for. Of course there is. Let's go back to the main task at hand. Yeah. Um, we already have that rhomboidal hull. For starting work on the reinforced hull frame, you'll need to allocate all of your engineers to the research project. Okay. And that will take seven days, apparently, and we have to start it. Engineers will commit it to this project until its completion. Are you certain you wish to proceed? Um, yeah, I suppose so. Well, since you've not really given me a choice. Uh, sometimes it will be difficult to keep track of all that is happening in the research department. To assist you with this task, our employees have prepared, prepared an executive summary that you can access right over here. Okay. This is another window where you can find all essential information about the building. In the center, you can find the current status of the building represented in multiple attributes of so maintenance, engineers, Fire risk, accident risk, sabotage risk, hull, focus, turret, focus, blah, 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 blah. Uh, to the right, you can upgrade your facility if you choose to do so. Uh, I might choose to do so. 
Uh, beyond the immediate cost of each upgrade, there will also be an increased maintenance cost and potential risk increases as well. So be mindful when expanding and upgrading your business, because those gains will come with additional strains. Finally, from here you can also assign members of the executive board to their new roles to boost building productivity and decrease risks of fire, sabotage and accidents. Excellent, time to return to the factory grounds and visit other buildings. Okay, let's do that. Uh, let's take a look at uh, design. Oh, I have to move forward. So what do we have up here? We have workers, engineers, administrators. Okay, we researched with that. After much trial and error, the reinforced hull frame research project has been successfully completed. Many of our engineers have worked extra hours to make this possible. Make sure to visit your engineering department in order to turn the newly acquired blueprints into powerful tech components for your future designs. And don't forget to assign the relieved engineers to a new task. Okay. Let us proceed to the engineering workshop and learn how to handle component modification. Okay. Let's do that. As you can see, the factory is in disarray, as much of the construction has only recently concluded. Let us proceed to the engineering workshop and see how we can go about turning blueprints from the research department into tank parts. Sounds good to me. All right. The workshop is divided into six dedicated stations. There's one station per tank component. Okay, so we have there. Let us, let us, oh, okay, never mind. Each component has a lot of modification potential. This potential is represented by the modification slots that can be found along the bottom of the screen. Okay, note that these slots come in different types and you need to match the type with the modifier in order to mount it. Yeah. Ooh, and we can swivel around and take a look. Ooh, cool. All right, so let's click the front. Remember that all applicable modifiers are now shown. Okay. Some are ready for use of mount, that one. While others are either not researched yet or currently locked for you. So if we don't, if they haven't been researched, then how do we know that they exist. That is a question that I'm wondering. Alright, uh, please select escape hatch. Okay, you can now observe the attached escape hatch. By rotating your perspective around the hole, this can be achieved by holding down the right mouse button and click drag. You're also able to zoom the view using the mouse wheel. Okay, can I take it off again? Where's the escape hatch that we just put in? Uh, it's on the top. I guess it's that one right there, or is it that one right there? I suppose it's that one. It looks more like that one. Note that each modifier adds specified attributes. Yep. So there are some things that get affected, but that comes at the additional production costs, both in terms of the world's resources and man hours required to manufacture the component. At any point of all information at any point all information about this estimated production cost is readily available for you below. With this information you can always make the right decision to to if the assembled configuration is adequate or too costly. So we have the information down here. We have two hundred thousand buckaroos and I guess we can store 50 tanks. We have these materials. Okay. I wonder what these materials are. It's not something that's in the game yet, it seems. Equally important are, of course, the resulting attributes, which we have over here on the right. Okay, crew requirements, mobility, firepower, soft, hard, protection, reliability, repairability, and crew performance, and of course, mass at the very top. Here you can you find the total mass of the part together with the mounted modifiers. All component attributes are distributed in seven, distributed in seven groups. Please open the mobility group to inspect more of the corresponding attributes. So 
Okay, so we can see here we have agility, road speed, cross country speed, obstacle trench width, yeah, obstacle slope angle, step height, transportability, and range. Note that each attribute is supplied with a description and a breakdown of those attributes. Values. Let us now try to start the engineering project. Okay, do that. Okay. Excellent. We have now created a minimal configuration for our hall and named it. You will certainly improve it in the future. Please assign engineers before starting the project. So, 15 days. Well, five days. Okay, let's go ahead and start that. Engineers will be committed to this project until it's completed. Are you certain you wish to proceed? Yes, I am. Okay, now let's return the track ground and we will wait for this project to be done. Okay, the Mark 1 engineering project has been successfully completed. Uh, it might be worthwhile to visit your design bureau. Okay. Okay, so we need to go to the design bureau now, which is over there. Alright, we're in the design bureau, apparently finally. This is the birthplace of all your future tanks. Later on you'll be able to perform more tasks here, but for the time being, let us focus on the major one. Yeah, let's please follow me to the design bureau where we start building our first tank. Alright. Uh, first we must choose blah 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 okay so we need a hull please review the notes about that our engineers have left for you in, on the hull item there are four important fields that you will have to consider when choosing what hull to use as a base okay so the mass of the component is heavy as crap uh, raw resources uh, man hours and cost and modifiers mounted in the sockets of the given tank component note that you can even directly access the information on the individual modifiers okay. uh, the reference you can see a reference you can see how many versions of the same base tank component have been engineered so we have one base tank component with that being said let us select the only hull that is currently available and proceed let's do that okay so next is the running gear uh, we can only select the one like hulls we have only one component available it has the similar information but with one significant difference better proceed with the only one available all right it is the running gear that dictates the maximum mass allowed for your tank note that the weight indicator has now changed and the maximum value has appeared. So maximum 28,500, uh, and we're currently at 19,138 kilos. That is heavy mofo. All right, uh, let us now proceed to fill in the empty stations with the available tank components. Next in queue is the power unit. Okay, and I guess we're selecting that one. Uh, because we don't have any others, then the secondary weapon, I guess it's that one. The turret, apparently that one. And the primary weapon, apparently that one. Note that all of the available circuits must be filled before your design will be ready for trials. Okay, now we're almost ready. What remains is to select the recommended ammunition rounds for the chosen six pounder. Let us go and consult our engineers on the ammunition loader tank okay. we're up to 25,000 basically of 28.5 so it's pretty heavy as you can see we only have a few slots available so we need to choose our ammunition ammunition based on the type of position that we expect our tanks to encounter okay in our case let us make a reasonable mix a general purpose common and common ammunition to take care of infantry the uh, six shell right and for the second slot available, uh, I guess we're going with the solid steel shells. Okay. And then we need to apply crew. Uh, every combat unit should have a commander. Let's place him first. Sure, why not? 
Uh, next, let's give our vehicle the driver. Yeah, we're going anywhere without that. Uh, oh, uh, I, I don't really care what the driver looks like, to be honest. Uh, then we need a gunner and a... And another gunner? And another gunner? A loader would be handy to help gunners operate cannons. I agreed. So let's select a loader there. Our tank is a good machine, but let's add two mechanics just in case. Okay. I guess they're twins. No, not quite. All right. Let us now inspect the impact of crew composition. So they have a weight as well. As you can see, each role has a summary text and a crew score. The text explicitly describes if the allocated crew members are enough or not for the given role. Several statuses are available for, with each status yielding certain bonuses or penalties to the associated tank attributes. So it looks like we have enough of everything. Uh, we're a little bit over crewed on the gunners and the mechanics. That's fine. Note that the inoperable condition literally means that the design cannot be finalized until the issue is resolved. What inoperable? Nothing is inoperable. It is important to give the tank crew every bit of advances that we can offer. Let us consult with our specialist on what we can offer right now. We have a few slots available, so let us select the first one. Now we already have some crew some crew gear, some crew gear to choose from. For the time being we have both handheld guns and rifles. Let us equip our crewmen with some handguns to fend through those pistol holes. Okay? Let us further equip our crew with additional defensive gear. We can pick up rifles to further increase their chances to survive if they have to defend themselves. Well, I suppose they will have one slot left to fill. Uh, face masks. Okay, so they want to be Jason. Okay, for the last... Sorry, I was like, no, face mask was will decrease the... Yeah, now we're almost set. Please inspect the breakdown of the required role resources. So... A lot of... What is that? Well, that's just an, like a generic thing, isn't it? Because I think that's the warehouse capacity. Okay, 1,402 man hours, 9,092 cost. Okay, corresponding man hours and the estimation of the production cost. Please note that a tank is a complex vehicle and that there are multiple factors that are affecting its final att attributes. We'll take some rigorous trials until we learn what kind of attributes we have ended up with. Until then, uh, we can only guess. Let us finalize our design with a proper name that will go into history as the first ever tank. Please choose the name of your liking. Um, we will call our tank... Um, what, what will we call our tank? Uh, we will call it... Um, uh, guns on wheels. Guns on wheels. Alright, now all that's left is to assign the available engineers to the process. Alright, we have 15 engineers available and it'll take them 12 days. That's not too bad. Uh, yes, we want to do that. And exit the sign. Exit that. And then we need to move forward. But I think we'll call this one here. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, we haven't gotten that far. We are going through the tutorial, right? But we are, we've designed a tank. We've d designed our very first tank. Uh, is it good? I have no freaking clue. But I'm excited to find out if it is. So if you are, then uh, it would be great if you would hit the like button, the subscribe button and uh, come back for the next video on uh, arms trade tycoon tanks still a mouthful still a mouthful but yeah uh, thank you very much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did why not leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you next time